Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, discussion among friends and colleagues entitled Worldwide Experiences on Contemporary TAVI Implantation Technique with the Evolute Platform. I am Stefan James. I'm a professor of cardiology and an interventional cardiologist in Uppsala, Sweden. And I'm joined uh, here today um, by my colleague Kendra Grubb, who is an associate professor of surgery uh, at Emory um, University, Atlanta, Georgia. And also Yohei Ono, who is a co-director of interventional cardiology uh, in the cath lab of Tokai University in Japan. You're both, of course, very welcome to this discussion. So I'd like to start uh, by handing over to Dr. Grubb. Uh, can you tell us about the, and highlight the results of the Optimize Pro uh, study and your experiences, please? Stefan, thank you so much. Um, the Optimize Pro study is, is really a, an exciting um, study right now because we're really trying to look at best practices using the Evolute valve. And so the interim analysis is now up to 400 patients in the United States and Canada. All of these patients have severe aortic stenosis. It was kind of an all comers trial. But one of the key exclusions was no bicuspids as well as no inbound pacemakers. And so a lot of the trials, when they report their pacemaker um, rates, they have patients who already have pacemakers. Well, for this, there are no pacemakers. And the trial really focuses on three elements, pre, intra, and post-op pathways for these patients. So we're selecting a certain group of patients. They're having their procedure with the cusp overlap technique or REO page projection with the goal of landing the valve really one to three millimeters deep, which is much higher than we had traditionally landed the valve. And then postoperatively conduction pathways, working for same day discharge, but certainly any patient with a new conduction abnormality would be monitored appropriately with predetermined pathways. And this analysis of the first 400 patients now out to 30 days is really exciting data. Uh, we again see no patients with moderate or severe aortic regurgitation, which is really exciting. Um, this is excellent results. Clearly the wrap around the, the pro valve is, is helping, but also this high implant depth is really adding to getting a great seal. In terms of pacemakers, I reported single digit pacemakers uh, at the interim analysis that I presented after the, the uh, um, first hundred, and we continue to see single digit pacemaker implantation rates. Now, what is driving that? It was really interesting. So certainly the cusp overlap technique drove the low pacemakers, the higher implants, really understanding where the membranous septum is, as well as use of the Lundquist wire. We found that those um, teams who used the Lundquist wire, they had better results. So if you follow the steps of cusp overlap, you end up getting very, very low rates of pacemaker. There was a large number of, of sites, mine included, that we had no pacemakers in the trial, which is really exciting considering, you know, for low risk, the pacemaker rate was over 17%. In terms of next day discharge, we were able to achieve that as well. The median length of stay, one day. So with this new technique, you know, we, we came from a place where um, implanters were worried that because they had a self-expanding valve, the patient had to stay extra days. They had to leave in a temporary pacemaker. Um, they were going to have higher pacemaker rates. And with this just small change and these pathways, we were able to achieve really outstanding results, drive the pacemaker rate down below um, 10%, as well as uh, have the patients home the very next day. So exciting results. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kendra, for giving, for summarizing the results uh, and, and sharing your experiences about this uh, small shift in technique, but it makes a huge difference when we use this systematically. And I, I now want to hand over to Yuhei and uh, want you to share your experiences and talk about your uh, results from the OCEAN uh, study, please. Sure. Thank you so much for your kind introduction. Um, I'm really delighted to share our initial ex uh, experience and data from the Ocean Tavi Registry. To begin with, the Ocean Tavi Registry is an ongoing prospective and observational registry in 14 high volume centers in Japan, which includes 2,588 patients uh, who underwent Tavi for severe aortic stenosis. We have collected data 
from 12 centers, which are considered to have adequate experience in Evolute using cusp overlap technique. Study period was from July 2020 to August 2021. And the, um, throughout this period, 300 patients were analyzed. Uh, and primary endpoint was rate of all-cause mortality or disabled stroke at 30 days. So um, among these patients, two all-cause deaths and two disabled strokes were identified, 0.7% uh, respect respectively. And surprisingly, uh, from our data, new pacemaker implantation rate at 30 days was 4%. And uh, on top of that, new onset left bundle branch block was 9.7%. Our previous new pacemaker implantation rate uh, was 16.9% in our cohort with superannular self-expandable platform. Therefore, obviously significant reduction was observed in our uh, registry. Not only the cusp overlap technique, but also with operator's experience and newer generation valves such as Civilic Pro and Pro Plus uh, made this result possible. All patients received one valve uh, implanted, although one patient developed valve migration. Uh, we should not require second valve since there was still annular, annular contact. So um, to summarize our data, 30 days out was uh, remarkable uh, with significant reduction in pacemaker rate. Uh, and overall result was um, acceptable. Thank you. Thank you, Yohei. I think you also showed that just this change in implementation technique, looking at RAO uh, and, um, and have a systematic approach to this can, can result, achieve incredible results in terms of low pacemaker rates, uh, but also more stabilized uh, valve implementation, uh, which also saves, reduces the, the, the number of patients with, with paravalvular leaks and can shorten the uh, hospitalization um, so can you just briefly, Kendra, uh, can you just um, describe how this technique uh, works? How do, you, how do you do this, just briefly? Well, sure. Um, and I wanted to add one other um, comment, if I may. Um, when I was talking about Optimize Pro, and I mentioned that was the first segment, the first 400, I failed to mention that we're actually expanding into Europe and the Middle East, as well as Australia and New Zealand. So there'll be 200 additional patients implanted using this technique in Europe and the Middle East and 50 from Australia and New Zealand. So the trial will end up being 650 patients. Um, and I think that it will continue to show excellent results. So the technique itself really relies on understanding where you are in space. And so instead of landing the valve in the kind of coplanar view that we've grown so accustomed uh, accustomed to, or the three cusp view, here we roll and we isolate the non, and that's really, really important. So rolling RAO will isolate the non and overlap the right and the less left cusp. So the peak tail will be at the base of the non that will kind of splay out the membranous septum. So the initial deployment and the cusp overlap projection, that RAO projection, uh, to estimate de the depth of implant only at the non-coronary cusp. We start with the marker band positioned mid pigtail or higher and let the valve descend into the annulus. Whereas in the old technique, we would drop below the annulus and often be pulling back the valve. Here we wanna just let the night null expand and the valve expand into the annulus. Once the valve is at 80%, we then do an injection in the REO view, but only looking at the non-coronary cusp and assess the depth there. And here we're shooting for really three millimeters. One to three is our target. Uh, in the study, the average implant depth was right around three. At this point, we're gonna roll to the REO view. We're gonna remove any remaining parallax and then do a picture in, in this projection and estimate the depth at the left coronary cusp. But all of our key um, depths are gonna be based on the non. But we're not gonna pay attention to that when we're in the LEO view because it's going to skew uh, our perception of how deep the valve is. But certainly if you've missed the annulus on the left, you would want to um, go deeper, but really paying attention to the depth on the non is the key step. At this point, if we're happy, we're three millimeters on the non, we've uh, at the annulus or below 
uh, on the left, we then go ahead and release the valve. Um, final assessment of depth is based again on that ARIO projection in the non-coronary cusp. And for this trial, we are advocating for the use of the Lundekus guide wire. And our, our results do show that that has been beneficial. Thanks, Kendra, for that nice explanation. And I, I recommend those of you who are listening or not really familiar with the technique, spend some time on, on pre-planning, uh, look at the CT, try to understand the anatomy, what happens when you shift from LIO to RIO, and how do you isolate the, the non-coronary cusp? And, and when you do that, uh, we did that in our institution. We, we established this technique systematically um, at last year. And we moved really quickly to quicker procedures, uh, better planned ahead of the procedure. Uh, we were able to achieve a drop in pacemaker rates from about 10 to 12 percent to 5 to 6 percent immediately. immediately. Uh, we shortened the operational time and we shortened the duration of hospitalization uh, without any uh, cost in terms of more pop outs or, or more, but certainly less uh, patients with, uh, with uh, um, PVL. So I don't see any, uh, any really risks uh, associated with this technique, uh, but it takes a little, if you're very used to a, the triplanar tri view, you need to spend some time on understanding the, the background and the anatomy. Um, so those are my experiences with this, uh, completely uh, positive and supportive. Uh, what are your experiences, Yohei, from your institution? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, really, I agree with you, you too. And overall, this technique is promising and um, I really like it. So I believe that the beauty of this technique is the consistency and the reproducibility of the results. So even with, let's say, early experience in platters, this technique will provide excellent results uh, with um, less procedure time. And uh, as you emphasized, I guess to learn the anatomy um, by both CT scan and the floral images will um, facilitate this technique even more. So um, I basically try to um, implant the uh, valve at the NCC side very meticulously and then go to the LAO side and see the uh, LCC side and then the uh, balance of the coronary flow. So um, I guess this uh, approach uh, offers tailor-made approach patient by patient. If the patient has long membrane septum, we can even go a slight little bit deeper in order to facilitate coronary access in the future. So this really makes a big difference. Hmm. Yeah, thanks a lot. Kendra, I guess your experiences are, are similar? Very reality? similar to what he's describing. I would just add, you know, we started using the cusp overlap technique for the Evolute valves in 2019, so long before the trial actually was underway, and really saw really great results. So we, um, like many people, had double-digit pacemaker rates with the um, Evolute platform. And just switching to the cusp overlap technique, um, our initial experience was that our pacemaker rate was about three and a half percent. And that was very exciting. Now we had never had a special pathway for our self-expanding valves. They were a nurse-led sedation, um, all lines out if we could to the floor and home the next day. And, and so it didn't change our practice that much, but what it did was it eliminated that, that pacemaker rate that was so annoying. And so we, we really think that this cusp overlap view is not only making it more reproducible and easier for us to implant the valve, but much better for the patient. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's what's most important, of course, uh, overall, that the patient have good experiences and good results. And I, I would recommend everybody who's listening you know, to take this technique to you and try to really test it, um, practice on CT, on fluoro, and uh, make sure you implement it systematically because you will see that you can get very reproducible results uh, that can, of course, favor patient outcomes. So thank you very much, Kendra and Yuhei, for sharing your experiences with us and the team and, and the listeners. And I really hope that the listeners uh, get a, um, inspiration from, from this and you are 
uh, inspired to go home and start practicing. And please come back with questions or concerns if you do have any to any one of us or, or from the Medtronic team. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.